Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. Alright, it has been quite a while since I've done a book review, and personally, it has also been quite a long time since I have read a work of cyberpunk, and this book is a quintessential work of 90s cyberpunk, and it is incredible. This book comes highly recommended, and the book is Solace by A.A. A. Atanasio. So A.A. A. Atanasio is a, he's an author who I think is pretty underrated. I've read two of his other books, uh, Radix, and Radix is somewhat sequel. There's, I think there's four books in the Radix series, but you don't really need to read them in order. But I've read Radix and In Other Worlds, I think, and that was like probably over 20 years ago. And I remember both of them being great, and I am going to revisit Radix soon. And I am going to read a lot more Atanasio um, this year because everything I've read from him so far has really interested me. And I think he is an author who is on my same wavelength. So when I say this is a work of quintessential cyberpunk, when I was reading this, I kept thinking of two things. I kept thinking of Philip K. Dick's Martian Time Slip and late 80s early 90s anime like bubblegum crisis and i think if you combine those two things you would end up with something like this and if you are into philip k dick or you are into that kind of anime idea of cyberpunk the cyberpunk filtered through japanese animation i think you're going to like solace a lot and uh the little quote on the book says uh, this is your brain on cryogenics on cryogens any questions and uh, the book has a really kind of haunting premise um, it's basically about this guy named Charles who dies and it's at the time of when they're just kind of um, exploring the idea of, of putting a brain into deep freeze when you died to be woken up possibly you know years years hundreds maybe thousands of years later and that happens to Charles uh, this character he dies he freezes his brain and then he wakes up thousands of years later only to find that his brain has been inserted into a mining machine to act as wetware to control a um, mining out in the distant asteroid field. So he has been relegated to the super mundane task and um, through this, uh, he's able to manipulate this machine and he sends out a distress call where he he asks to be saved and this android picks up the distress call and the android and this other human uh, female character, they go out to rescue Charles, his brain, and take his brain to Mars to this last city of humanity and hopefully they can get admittance into this city and hopefully they can get um charles can get a new body grown for his brain and along the way they come across all kinds of great other characters so the androids character his name is monk that's m-u-n-k but it's also i think definitely a play on like the monk of being a, a a religious type character the androids in this book are very interesting in that they are given this um this counterintuitive programming each monk ha or each android has its own bespoke kind of counterintuitive programming that gives them kind of a spice of life that gives them a purpose and monks spice his purpose is to be deeply interested in and concerned about the well-being of of, uh, hu of of humanity and so he is kind of like humanity's steward and he wants to learn about humanity and in a way kind of becomes human and that's a lot about what this book is about is uh exploring the nature of humanity and consciousness like a lot of cyberpunk is as a matter of fact one of the ideas in this book is that um consciousness is basically just a witness to the functions of a mind and body and that's kind of an interesting idea um, the other character's name she is a jumper and um, she jumps into dangerous situations as a worker and um, her name her name is may and uh, jumper may and uh, she teams up with monk 
to rescue this brain of Mr. Charles. And then they are also joined by this pilgrim who wants to get to the city on Mars so she can die. There's this suicide cult. There's all kinds of weird like techno and religious cults that are vying for power and each is kind of like organized into this weird kind of hierarchical, hierarchical structure where they are competing for power and for um, for their places in the universe. They are joined by a reporter who is basically doing TikTok videos, but this was of course written in like 1994, I think it came out. But he's basically an influencer uh, cataloging or um, recording his journey with Monk and Jumper May and Charles. And so he's along for the ride. And it's just, yeah, it's really a fascinating book. Lots of action and adventure. The, the, the first half of the book is really kind of like the action part, the adventure part. And then the second part of the book is kind of this religious and spiritual journey through the wilderness of Mars as this just very odd group of characters is traveling towards the city of Solace and what they have to deal with once they get there. And I'm not going to spoil anything because there's some really good twists. There are some really interesting revelations about certain characters and ultimately about the idea of consciousness and what Monk discovers is his purpose being tied to the brain of Mr. Charles. So yeah, Solace, highly recommended. A. A. Atanasio, a fantastic author. This dude, he lives in Hawaii. He's kind of like this like gonzo surfer cyberpunk dude. He's also written uh, historical fiction, uh, very kind of uh, more on the fiction side than the historical side of uh, King Arthur. Uh, the book I want to read next from him is kind of a um, nautical themed fantasy called Wyvern. And uh, this is pretty interesting. So this was written in 1994, or published in 94. And this little uh, note at the end here says that this novel is based on the concept of cryonic suspension, freezing a patient today in the hope, not yet the expectation, of resuscitating and healing that person in the future. Readers should realize that cryonics is not just science fiction. It is a service that anyone can pay for. Your brain can be frozen. Though to what consequence, only the future knows waking up being the wetware for a super mundane machine would be an existence worse than hell, I, I would think. Uh, further details about current cryonic technology are available from the Alcor Foundation. It'd be really interested to see if that foundation is uh, still around. And here's the synopsis from the back of the book. Swollen, swollen with dreams, I awoke from the dead. I will say that one thing, if you do choose to read this, is to get through the first few pages of the prelude. Uh, the prelude is, is, is a little, it's, it's, it's kind of unnecessary. It does set up some things and it has some pretty weird like metaphors going on that don't quite work and I wasn't quite sure. I'm really glad I read past the prelude and gave it a chance because it gets much better. Uh, so so just, just give the book about 10 or 15 pages before you judge it. Uh, Charlie Otis was uh, gambling on the future when he had his brain frozen at death. He lost his bet. 1,000 years later, he wakes up to find himself a slave to a machine. His cerebral cortex, found in a chronic dump, has been thawed and installed as the CPU of an asteroid belt ore carrier in a far future run by genetically amplified Neo sapiens and drones and Autobots. But Mr. Charles has a plan. So yeah. Really good book. If you're looking for maybe a, a work of uh, early, mid-90s cyberpunk that is a little off the beaten path, a little off the radar, something a little different, maybe something that uh, isn't always talked about, I do highly recommend Solace. Great book. And I also recommend just in general Atanasio as an author. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, return to some book reviews. We will be doing more in the future. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.